Dodgeball Championship Tournament here in sunny Bowling Green, Kentucky. It is uh, day two, Sunday, which means it's tournament time. And this is a round of 60 match between WKU themselves, the Hilltoppers, and James Madison University, JMU, in, from Virginia, all the way from Virginia. Now, before we get started, I do want to point out, you have to follow me around here a little bit. Right over here, we have basically the entire roster for Townsend. Scouting. Why is that, Ben? They're scouting now. Uh, whoever wins this game is definitely going to have to play uh, Townsend. Now, they were pretty darn confident that it was going to be JMU. They actually even said it straight up. Oh, next round's versus JMU. But that's not always the case. Uh, I mean, this is a 15 seed versus a number two seed. Stranger things have happened in right. sports. But, hey, maybe. WKU pulls the upset? Yeah, uh, I mean, JMU you could come down with a really quick case of bacterial meningitis, highly contagious. It hit the whole team very quickly. Uh, that would take them out uh, and give WKU a fighting chance. That would be something. <laughs> Definitely something. Or uh, let's say hypothetically I paid one of the employees here to shut the lights off and equipped everyone on WKU with night vision goggles. Weirder things have happened to Ben Subcheck. That would be very weird. <laughs> Um, what does WKU have to do in order to make this a, a competitive game here, Alex? You know, um, we've talked about a couple other games. Uh, WKU is one of the teams that relies very, very heavily on just a handful of players because a lot of the other players are very new, uh, not a lot of experience. It's, you know, even though it's an older program, it's a very young team. It's a very new team, not a lot of experience. Um, really, the only thing that's going to save them is if they can really pinpoint the strong arms for JMU, get them out of the game, and then play a very smart tactical game. Uh, they just they can't lose their, their top four players at, at any point. They just really can't. Hey, fellas. Can I pop in on this commentating team here? No. Yeah, no. Okay, fine. I'm losing vision here. Watch the water, Ben. That's pretty far over. <laughs> All right, well, let's be honest here, guys. Uh, I don't think anyone in this building right now expects WKU to pull this upset. <laughs> so they do have the nobody believes in us factor going for them. They are huge, if huge, huge under movie, we'd, If this was a Disney movie, we'd have it. Yes. Um, so I think right now, if I'm Nick Johnson, I'm telling my team, A, let's have fun. Uh, nobody expects us to win. So let's go out and play fearless. Yeah. We have nothing to lose. Yeah, and no pressure because we have the shortest drive home. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you're going to leave disappointed. You get to stick around the rest of the day. And uh, this is where WKU's catching will really work to their benefit. And if they can get some catches, if they can stare down the barrel of the gun, JMU has some of the best power arms in the league. If they can stand in and catch those guys, then who knows? I mean, stranger things have happened. I really wish that the, uh, the microphone could pick up the, the whistle that some of these balls are, are, are producing when they're thrown. And the... Well, you won't be able to feel it, but we can up right above where the balls are hitting the wall, and it is intimidating. We talked about that last night. You know, when you're playing a game and you have a ball that's coming fast, coming at you, it's coming so fast and it's spinning that it sounds like a buzz saw, and the ball actually flattens out from the centrifugal force. It is a terrifying thing. Yes, a terrifying up here. Imagine being down in the path of said buzz saw. Someone's trying to hit you with that buzz yes. saw. Someone wants to take your head off, but right, here we go. Yeah, underway here, WKU versus JMU. 77 goes yeah, down. Yeah, 77. That's Zach Kelsey going down there for WKU. Already we have JMU getting up on the front line, just posting there. They're not going to. Yeah, they're, they're going to dominate the uh, neutral zone all game, I have a feeling. And really, I was talking to Josh Hicks before the game. I said, look, you guys have just got to try to catch. You go about 80% defense, 80% catching, 20% throwing, because these guys are too good, and you're only, your only hope. Yeah, WKU goes out. So we're already down to 13 players versus all 15 for JMU left in. Is JMU's mascot? Uh, they're called the, they call themselves the Dukes, uh, but it's uh, Bulldog is like the, the icon oh, yeah, or the yeah, logo. Duke, What's making this, it's going to make it really difficult to uh, call out names for uh, JMU because the jersey numbers and names are on the back, so do not expect the names to be called out this round, but next uh, half you will be able to get the, the names specifically for JMU. Ben was lamenting there, we actually did have a catch by WKU. Took out number 22, is Taylor, Taylor Wilhelm, yep. uh, bringing back in one of WKU's own. And it looks like, do we have a balls over? It would appear as 
though. Oh, that's wonderful. That's exactly what you want to give a team like JMU, that kind of firepower. So very uh, startlingly similar to yesterday, because I believe Western had their first shot clock infraction about two minutes in the, their first game yesterday. On Number nine, that's Dominique Warfield with the catch. Uh, seven four, takes Mr. out seven out. and four, Zach Booker. Western with the man advantage right now. Granted, it's only by one, but it's yeah. still there. I will say when they played JMU at the UK tournament, they were only down three nothing at half, and that sounds like <laughs> that sounds like a lot. But you got to keep in mind the mismatch that we have here. This game could easily be a five or six nothing at halftime. But what I was getting at was that WKU had JMU at a couple of points down, and actually had the advantage for a good portion of some of those points. Now, granted, JMU was probably easing off the throttle, but the I thing. liked what I saw. Jesse, we saw WKU up against Saginaw Valley every single point in the first half and the first few points in the second half. And they just can't close out a game in the aggressive manner in the midpoint, in the middle of the point that they need to have. They don't have the aggression in the mid game that they need. Right now they're playing their right style, the right game. And number 19 getting a kill. So we're it's Nick Johnson, yeah. yeah, it takes that number 13, uh, it, Jeremy Butcher. It's not enough, it's not enough. It's enough right now. Yeah. WKU's actually up 15 to 12. Another catch by WKU, number 20. That's uh, out Ever, Everett Taylor. Great, oh, great catcher. I'm getting a little I'm getting a little excited for WKU. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They're doing exactly what you just told them to do. This is an 80% defensive game. Yeah. They're kind of lulling JMU to sleep right now. And what's great is they also, well, unfortunately, they have the back of the wall that's not going to, but they're doing such a great job of preventing the ricochet back to uh, JMU. So they're starting to get ball advantage. So you can see them actually getting some blockers up there in the front, too. Debbie Sorrells, Big Bird's mom, says, Mom believes, go tops. Thanks, Debbie, for all your support from 3WK alumni and here. Debbie, I want to apologize for the shaky camera yesterday. I know it was bugging you. <laughs> that was probably me with my with my. Because I was reading the comments while she posted. <laughs> we also had a question: What other teams are playing right now? We have Bowling Green State versus Michigan State. We also have DePaul. You know, unfortunately, I was just watching this game. Bowling Green State University had a significant man advantage on this court off to our right, but it looks like Michigan State has turned it around on him. There was, uh, you might have heard a lot of yelling and cheering over there. And actually, they just made a big catch. So that's another. That's going to be another big upset. Yeah, another, there. yeah, close game. Um, we also have DePaul versus Central Michigan, and we also have getting ready to start Grand Valley versus VCU. So that gives you an idea of some of these round two matchups that are going on. No, that's actually, this is still the, the round of 16, but this is the second round of play because they, we only have eight courts, so or four courts. Uh, so this is the, the next uh, round of 16 here. You know, me and Ben were talking a minute ago. If you, want, if you look at all these other courts, you know, yesterday the courts were surrounded by people that were just kind of watching. But if you look, each court is kind of surrounded by, by teams that will play those teams. Yeah, we made the we made the comment. Townsend, the entire ten, like Townsend team is speaking of Townsend, right hey, behind. Hey, oh, how are you, buddy? Hey, you know what? Everything past this is gravy, my friend. So I could not be doing. Thank you very much. Yeah, Everything not, not, could, nice win, buddy. Yeah, we appreciate that. That was really I mean, impressive. I was saying we were. Um, I told this gentleman over here we were listening to your. Um, to your guys' commentary on us joke? against they Bowling Green did. for like, we instead of going out and drinking, we sat in our hotel no, room and 10 of us and we listened yeah, we to your broadcasting. We know for a fact they did because when we yeah. interviewed TJ a few minutes ago, TJ was like, oh, you like my church gloves? Because that was a comment. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, I thought that was so that funny. That was a comment that Ben made. So they're, they're taking it very seriously. <laughs> Yeah, that's, Research. I was watching the stream last night, but uh, that's hilarious. Those guys in lieu of partying went out and watched the live stream at their hotel. And that's the thing. I mean, this this college dodgeball is is a party after the first game or the first uh, the first day. So it's definitely pushing up. Thirty seven goes down. Ooh. Okay, I can't see it. Yeah, it's definitely. His body was in the way. See, it's a party night on the Saturday. But everyone's so tired yeah. that you got to wonder how much partying actually happens. Uh, not as much as you probably as as the story. I think I think, mo back, I think yeah. most of it probably happens on Friday once teams get in after you know, a like, long. Oh man, run. it was a crazy last night last night. Dinner at eight thirty, big glass of Metamucil, and then bed. <laughs> that was us, yeah. <laughs> Team catch there, uh, off the foot of Hunter Dickinson brings back in uh, number thirty-five for WKU. Team who likes the style that WKU is playing, and it's working for WKU. This is actually the style that we employed against Grand Valley my senior year at the Bowling Green State Nationals. We basically just said, we're going to throw 
occasionally, and we're going to just make you throw at us and try to nickel and dime you for the entire game. And we only ended up losing 4 nothing. Last time we had played, last yeah, sixteen nothing in one half. The last time we had played them before that. So, you know what? I'm sure Nick has talked to a lot of uh, the respected dodgeball minds that have come out of WKU to formulate a strategy for this game, and I like what they're coming out with so far. They're not going to get blown out. That's and you've got to think Townsend's probably watching and they're seeing that JMU doesn't know what to do against a defensive team, and that's something that Townsend has been excelling at the last couple of games. So I think Townsend's taking a lot of notes right now. Yeah, you would think so. I think JMU's maybe used to a much higher tempo game. And uh, right now, the topper's not, not wanting to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and push the pace with these Dukes. Nick Johnson goes out there on a shot to the knees. Again, Nick Johnson is not throwing far enough forward. He's been throwing a lot at his uh, line, and so there's another throw at our um, our neutral zone line instead of theirs. They really need to get past half court if they really want to make this a, a game. We have, uh, even even numbers on the court right now. Even number. I think it's what 11-11 maybe. Yep. So 11-11. I think what's happening is WKU is not really concerned too much with getting kills with their throws. They are really just saying we're going to reset the shot clock. If we have an opening, we'll take it. But we're going to try to catch you guys all day. Ooh. The nice attempt to the catch there by Everett Taylor and a kill by number. 15, uh, Joey Cardella. JMU definitely, oh, a big old team, th well, fake team throw. WKU not doing as well with less people with the ricochet balls coming back to JMU. Yeah, and uh, there's another catch right there. Cameron Murray Hicks, number 18, just went out for WKU. And looks like we just had a couple more. That's Will Angermeyer and number nine, Dominic Warfield. JMU starting to uh, tee off right now. This is not a fun place to be if you're the team back on the baseline. The top's just hoping to survive right now, maybe get a catch, which would bring in uh, Big Bird. So a catch right here would be nice because Big Bird is definitely one of the team's best catchers. <laughs> and their throwers, too. His shoulder's hurting a little bit this season, but uh, in the past has been a major force on this team as far as an arm goes. And you can tell JMU definitely has a size advantage. They all look like college athletes. This scrappy WKU bunch just has to play fearless and challenge these Dukes. And then you know what? If they get blasted because of it, so what? Yeah, like WKU's said, team has more of an anthropology major look to yes, them. Yes, they really do. JMU starting to really uh, pressure WKU. You can see them at the front line still. And oh, 37 with a leg catch. Leg catch, Vic Purnell there with a great leg catch. Big Bird back in the game. Big Bird coming back in now. Being very cautious as he re-enters the court because you can figure JMU is probably targeting anyone that comes back in trying to pick up an easy kill. Almost took Hunter Dickinson's hair off right there. Some crafty uh, dodging there by yeah, number, number seven. Ty, uh, Taylor Wilhelm is, is a beast. He's just waiting for a WKU to throw. You can see him. They just drop the ball immediately upon a WKU throw, waiting to make a catch. 35 goes down. Yeah, 35 for WKU. 35. So it looks like WKU is down to five players now, so they are on a JMU 10 count. JMU still with 11. JMU still with 11, so an 11 to five advantage for the Dukes. And a catch there, Brent Schenkel goes down, number 22. Is that, Taylor that's, Wilhelm, that's yeah. Taylor Wilhelm, yeah. Let me say his name a lot. I'll, I'll promise you that. So, and number 55 goes down for WKU there, I think on a headshot. He walks it off really easy. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, JMU a little confused at the beginning because WKU is using a very defensive tactic, which you don't see a lot at this stage in the tournament. But, you know, they had enough time to kind of get the way and measure and... Uh, you know, I think the rest of this, I think the rest of this match is going to go a lot like this. Now, very interestingly, it, it's actually very smart in this case. I know we've been we've been really getting on some of the dodgeball players this tournament for throwing at people with a ball blocking um, on purpose. WK is doing that now so they can prevent um, a catch. They just want to throw. Um, at someone with a ball so they block it instead of, ooh, we have a catch for WKU, though. Catch from Hunter Dickinson brings back in Josh Hicks, so that's a nice get for the toppers, but they are down to two players, number 32. 
Hunter Dickinson, and number eight, Josh Hicks there. Josh Hicks taking it off, the, taking it off his hair. <laughs> yeah, let's try to follow these toppers as best we can here, Alex.